you know, we need to understand that communication isn't just about speaking in a stage in front of 10,000 people. It's how do you make the quality of your life better? Because communication is every interaction you have, from the tough conversation you have with your family, to the great conversations you have over dinner with your friends, to the way that you talk to the guy who delivers your pizza. Everything that you do is communication. The better we learn to interact with others, the better our life will be. Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Today we have a very special guest, uh, Brendan from Master Talk. And Master Talk, if you're not familiar with it, is a YouTube channel. Brendan is the creator um, and lead coach, in fact, of, uh, of Master Talk, which is really designed to help people, number one, overcome their fear of public speaking, level up their communication skills and really master what I think is a vital, vital skill. Now, you may be thinking, is it that vital? Well, absolutely it is because the ability to communicate with other people and get them on board and, and work in collaboration with people is always good and useful. But in 2020, what we've learned even more so is now you're going to have many more interactions over a screen with people you've never met before. You're going to have interactions on Zoom and things like that. So this is a vital, vital skill if you want to live a long, happy and fruitful life. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you now to Brendan. Brendan, hello. How are you doing? Very good, Ian. How about yourself, man? Excellent. No, really, really good. Thank you. Really, really good. Nice sunny day here, which is always nice and, and useful. Um, so Brendan, let, let's just start with a little bit of background really then, because at the moment, obviously you, you set up Master Talk and we're going to get to, to what that is in a bit more detail and how you help people now as a communications uh, coach. But how did you get to that stage? What, what sort of happened to you in your life or, or made you sort of get there? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say the short story is when I was in university and I used to do these things called case competitions. Think of it like professional sports, but for nerds. <laughs> so while other guys my age were playing rugby or cricket or footy, things I wasn't really into, what I did instead is I applied that same competitive spirit, but to presentations. Okay. So for three years, I presented hundreds of times coach dozens of people on their communication skills, not to be a coach or a YouTuber or anything, but to get a job in the corporate world, which is what I did. You know, I worked in, in corporate for a long time. And then during that journey, I just asked myself a simple question, which is how do I make a difference in the world? And that's when I realized that a lot of the communication information was really bad online. You hear advice like, oh, Ian, you should be yourself. You should get up on stage. And I just said, wow, this is not useful. So I started making YouTube videos in my basement. One thing led to another. And here we are today. Excellent. Excellent. And you're right. You're absolutely right. There is a mass amount of useless information when it comes to communication. Um, and I totally agree with that. I think a lot of it is very, not only generic, but it's actually quite counterproductive, I think, for a lot of people. Um, is that what you found that a lot of the information out there actually, instead of helping people and sort of liberate them, it actually, it kind of holds them back a little bit. Absolutely. You know, my perspective on this is you're absolutely right. You know, we need to understand that communication isn't just about speaking in a stage in front of 10,000 people. It's how do you make the quality of your life better? Because communication is every interaction you have from the tough conversation you have with your family to the great conversations you have over dinner with your friends to the way that you talk to the guy who delivers your pizza, everything that you do is communication. The better we learn to interact with others, the better our life will be. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you're, you're 100% right. And I think it is it's such a vital skill that is massively overlooked in the education system, certainly in this country anyway, um, because it's kind of, it's, it's treated as though it's a given that you automatically, if you can speak, you can communicate. But of course, they're not the same thing. As you say, there's so much more to it than just verbalizing a phrase, a sentence, or a few words together, 
there's obviously the art of actually being able to bring people together, to be able to communicate in a way that allows collaboration and obviously makes life so much better. So what about yourself? Obviously, as you said, sort of back in the, the day when you were in education. So how did you, did you sort of help others with this skill at the time as well? Was it more of a personal journey or... You got it. So just to give more light to that, Ian. So when I, when I did case competitions, a good way of thinking about it is a business gives you a problem. And then based on that problem, you have to spend a couple of hours thinking about a solution, making financial statements, making a risk statement, and then re-explaining your solution to those executives three hours after you started. Hmm. So you only have three hours to prepare all of this. And for some bizarre reason... I did this for fun. You know, a lot of people are looking at this like, why would they ever put themselves through any of this? But case competitions was was my equivalent of somebody else's basketball. So when I when I started cases, the reason I did it was mostly to get a job, but then it turned into an obsession later because a lot of big companies sponsored these events to see who the next talent of students is. But I was surrounded by, you know, 70 or 80 students in that program. Out of like thousands of students, there's probably 70 or 80 of them in it. But these are some of the best speakers on the planet. Like they would go to Thailand, Singapore, et cetera, et cetera, like Europe to Germany. There's a competition there where they would fly out and compete against all of the best schools in the world. And to, for you to have the best solution for you to win, you need to be the best speaker in the room. And I was the one training all these people, coincidentally, because we couldn't afford a speech coach. And I just happened to be good at communication. I just said, oh, let me try and coach these people. So, of course, I sucked at the beginning. I didn't really know what I was doing. But then over time, I developed a curriculum and a skill in it. And it somehow led to what I do today. So, it's kind of an interesting series of events. Excellent. And quite often is the case when you dig behind the sort of um, the background and the history of things. Like, for example, if you interview a a sportsman, like, for example, I've got a a podcast coming up soon where um, I'm speaking to a a professional soccer player, a footballer, and, you know, he's really good at one aspect of the game. And when you dig deeper and say, well, where did that come from? And initially the answer tends to be, well, you know, I was just always good at it. And he said, when did you become good at it? And then they kind of realized, you know, there was a time in their life when actually they probably put a lot of effort into that one skill. So similarly, like yourself, was there a time in your life when you kind of had to rely on better communication or you had to learn better communication as a child, as a young adult or whatever to to sort of be able to give you the ability to teach other people and help other people? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say there's two moments that come to mind. The first one was when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, I grew up in a city called Montreal. And in Montreal, you need to know how to speak French if you want to do well in the city. So my parents, of course, said, hey, buddy, you don't know the language. We're going to put you in a French education system, which, of course, the best decision they ever made for me. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it didn't feel so great. I mean, you're already uncomfortable as it is with presentations. Imagine giving one a language you don't know. So when I was seven or eight years old, I would stand up there and go, bonjour. And (laughs) that was my life. I couldn't interact with any of the other kids. I couldn't really talk in French. It was really hard for me to make friends and communicate. So that was the first moment. The second moment was when I started doing these competitions and it slowly, but rather quickly, it turned from, oh, this thing I need to do to an obsession. I just loved competitions. Every single day I was presenting or coaching somebody else. So you would always see me at school at like 10, 11 p.m. just coaching teams on their communication skills. I was a nut job. I was crazy. That's how I built up my skills. So probably in three years, I coached like 500 times. And I probably gave like 300 presentations myself and and I've competed in dozens of these competitions. So that's really where my skill, my core skill set came. Mm. And then because of that, you know, that's why, you know, even at a young age, I've, I've been able to, to coach people who are double my age, who are executives of companies. But it all stems from those two experiences when I was a kid and how I learned how to speak multiple languages and, and what happened a few years ago when I was in competitions. Yeah, absolutely. There's always a strong lesson in adversity and we look back in our histories and our lives and there's always a turning point. And clearly at, at five years old, you now have to learn a different language um, and be able to communicate effectively in both languages in two different environments. It's, it's, as you say, it's tough at the time, but at the same time, learning at that early age probably gave you the ammunition and the ability to 
number one, not even question communication because it was just like such a vital skill that you learned. And as you say, then that gave you the platform to then develop the passion and the competition element and bring it all together, which is fantastic. And then obviously you've been able to go on and help so many people, which is you know, really, really, really cool. And coincidentally, bonjour is probably about my limit when it comes to French anyway. So from that point on then, so in the corporate world, how did you find communication helped? Absolutely. Do you know what I always tell people at the corporate world, Ian, is if you practice outside of the boardroom, mm -hmm. you'll do really well in the boardroom because that environment is set up in a way where you can't really work on your communication skills. So I'll give you an example. You have a presentation due Friday. And by the way, if you don't give it, you get hit on your performance review and it needs to be 200 slides and you need to get all of this done. So you're not really focused on the delivery. You're just focused on making sure all of the bullet points are there. Mm. So it's not the best place for you to learn. Whereas what happened with me was when I started working at corporate, I started my corporate career at IBM and I joined, you know, I, I was able to make a name for myself very quickly because I was able to transition the communication skills I'd learned from competitions into the boardroom. So when I was presenting, it, it really made an impact in what I did and helped me stand out. So, so my advice to people is try and find ways to practice outside of the boardroom, whether that's a Toastmasters club that you join. It's not expensive at all. It's probably 70 bucks a year or something mm -hmm. where you're building that community of people around you. And then the other thing is, you know, listen to more conversations like this, get the best tips that you can get so that you can make yourself a better communicator and have fun with it. So that when you're in the boardroom, uh, you'll execute a lot better. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. And it's, it's very similar to, you know, like my environment here, going to the gym, you put the reps in. And if you're training for a competition, it's not what you do on the day that counts. It's all the reps that you put in on the way to that competition that gets you the results you want. So it sounds like a very similar situation. You want to be putting those reps in behind the scenes so that when it comes time for the presentations, you're absolutely, you've got it nailed on and you're going to win over the crowd, which is fantastic. So on the dark side of, of communication, because obviously, you know, communication is something, you know, we can use for our advantage in a good way. We can use it in our, for our advantage in, in for a not so great way. You know, if you look at some, I don't want to say sales in general, but some sales and marketing kind of borders on that sort of, uh, you know, sort of dark arts kind of situation. But um, did you find that you were able to use it in a, manipulative way in a good way, should we say, within a corporate environment? Did it help you sort of climb the ladder um, in ways that people might not even think of? That's an interesting question. I definitely think communication can be used for both, right? It can be used for good and be good, good use for evil, but that's why I chose to use it for good. Hence why I don't really coach politicians. I don't really say yes to those requests. But I think the, the idea is if you know what your goal is, you're right. Communication will help you skyrocket that. And it's, it's because the world is run by other humans and humans make mistakes. Humans aren't perfect. They're not 100% rational and logical. They're storytelling machines. They drive a lot of their decisions on emotion. So even if I'm competent, even if I know how to do the job, if I keep talking to you like this, Ian, you won't like me. Sure. You'll despise me. But if I talk to you in a very soft, calm way and ask you how your day is, even if I'm the most incompetent buffoon you've ever met, boy, are you going to like me anyways? <laughs> so, so it's the unfortunate reality of just being a part of this world. But I think if, if we're clear in our goals and if we have the right intentions, which I hope I have in this show, we can use those skills to make our lives better in a way that benefits other people too. Like yeah. you're a fitness coach, right? So this is a great example. You're using communication as a way to not just, you know, make ends meet, but also say, how can I inspire people around me to exercise, especially during times like this? This is the time where it's, it's as important more than ever. And you're the one inspiring people to do more of that. So that's, that's what I want to see communication used for. Absolutely. I 100% agree. It is so powerful to be able to use communication to get the best out of other people. And, you know, if you can, if you can tap into that, if you can use that to your advantage, as well as helping others, then that's even better. That's perfection as far as I'm concerned. So that's, that's really cool. And one thing I want to ask you as well, is a little bit off topic for, for what I do for sure, but certainly from your point of view, and I think it's going to be really useful to know in this current situation that we're all in globally. One of the biggest things that's happened obviously in 2020 is the communication like we're having now over Zoom, you know, over sort of uh, the internet and everything like that. So there's a lot of people meeting people for the first time. There's a lot of interviews that are happening over Zoom, things like that. So 
what would you say put I'm putting you on the spot here a little bit I know but if you if you had maybe three or five maybe sort of top tips for how to communicate effectively whether that be before the sort of meeting online or during it or after whatever it be what what would you sort of tell someone to how to get the best results um, if they're meeting someone for the first time or having a review or whatever it is online yeah of course happy to talk about that so the challenge with the online world and relative to the in-person one is that we can't gauge our audience's reaction. Let's say we're in person in the UK and I'm giving you a workshop, you know, you, your friends, your family, and I say a joke. Two things are going to happen. You're either going to laugh at the joke and say, wow, Brendan is such a funny guy. Or more likely, you're not going to laugh at all and say, wow, this guy's not funny. Why is he saying jokes? But either way, I can tell based on how you adapt based on how you're reacting to me, whether I'm funny or not, so I can adapt accordingly. Sure. But in the online world, you don't have that luxury anymore. Mm -hmm. You're on a Zoom call with 27 different people and all their cameras are off, which means that when you say a joke, you have to assume it's funny. That is the difference. So what are some of the tips that I have for the online world? The first one is in regards to eye contact. Always keep your eyes on the camera lens. So notice on this entire conversation, I always keep my eyes on the lens because it gives the illusion that I'm looking at you directly, even if that's not that's true. It. Yeah. So what you want to do to keep your eyes on the lens is simple. Take a favorite food, maybe something healthy because the fitness related show or somebody <laughs> that you love and put it next to the lens and you'll always keep your eyes on the lens. That's an easy trick. Cool. Second thing I would say is to practice virtually before the actual show. So that means Get four or five people that you know, have them jump onto a Zoom call and just critique everything about you. From the way that you're dressed, from the headsets, from the lighting, they'll comment on everything, your speech, drill you with a bunch of questions so that when you're ready for the real thing, you'll be phenomenal. And then the third piece of advice is always assume good intentions from your audience. Now I'll tell you a personal story. When I started podcasting and guesting on shows the first time, it was a very nerve wracking experience because essentially what a podcast is, is you're talking about the stranger you never met and they ask you uncomfortable questions about your life after hours of research on you. And you have to assume everything's normal. Obviously, it's for the benefit of the audience. But when you start, it's very weird. You're just like, well, why is he asking me about my dad? Why is he asking? <laughs> it's, it's a very bizarre feeling. But as you talk to people, the host after the show, you start to realize that, well, all of these podcasts just really care about their audience. They're adding so much value. So the intention that you bring to a show, the intention you bring to an episode changes very quickly. It goes from, who's this Ian guy? To, wow, look at all the value that Ian is, is bringing his community. I can't wait to share my, my two cents as well to help his, his people get better at whatever it is they want to do in life. So that's not a belief that you'll get overnight, but definitely one you'll get over time. So keep talking to your audience. Keep understanding who they are. Keep understanding what they aspire to become. And eventually, you'll fall in love with them too. Cool. Excellent. So do the reps, do your research, get some practice in, assume that you're going into it with good intentions and obviously make sure that you're presenting yourself in the right way by looking at the camera, making sure your video sound audio is as good as it can be by practicing with other people in a real time environment. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's all crucial, crucial things. And I think sometimes people can be a bit complacent with that as well because they, they've done it before that, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be okay. But as you say, you know, you're meeting someone sometimes for the first time and you might be perfectly fine if you've been locked down for three weeks at home in your pajamas, but maybe the other person doesn't want to see you in your pajamas. <laughs> maybe they want to see you in slightly more work, wear attire or whatever it be. So I think that's really good advice and that's going to definitely help people. So tell us a little bit more about Master Talk itself. Tell us a little bit more about the channel, about what kind of things that you're, you're helping people with and, and where you're going with that really. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Master Talk's a YouTube channel I started to help people with their communication skills. And the reason I started it, Ian, was I want people to learn this important skill, whether they can afford a speech coach or not, because I think communication is so vital. And that's why what I try to make Master Talk is I try and make it an encyclopedia of every single question that I could possibly get asked. So on the, on the channel, you'll find topics like how to build relationships really quickly. Mm -hmm. How do you present to an audience you've never met before? 
how do you present in a second language? Those are all some of many topics I cover. And really the goal and what's next with that is, is hopefully reaching a lot more people and, and living in a world where everyone's comfortable sharing their ideas. Because I think if we lived in a world like that, I think the world would be a better place. Absolutely. And I think one of the interesting things as well is um, definitely, you know, the, the ability to help people who have a fear of public speaking, because this is big. This is really, really big. And I think, as I say, 2020 has brought that out in a lot of people that didn't maybe even realize they had that fear. Because it's now, you know, it's made them go and do a Zoom call with 27 people or even 100 people where they now have to present something to an audience that maybe before they might have delivered via an email or whatever. But there's this call for more interaction because we're not seeing people face to face. So what would you say? I mean, other than sort of practicing itself, I mean, is there any advice you would give or, or sort of how would you help people if there's kind of psychologically held back a little bit from, you know, from actually taking the plunge in the first place and even doing any kind of public speaking. Absolutely. The, the approach I always like to talk about, Ian, is this idea that the fear will always be there. I still have the fear. A lot of professional speakers I speak to still have it too. But the question to ask ourselves is how do we get through that barrier? How do we break through the fear? By understanding the following, that as long as your message is more important than the fear, you'll always be successful. A good analogy I like to use is a boxing match. One side of the ring's your fear, the other side of the ring's the message. The fear will always be in the ring. But as long as your message gets a knockout punch, the fear becomes irrelevant. So always ask yourself this question if you're scared of starting or even if you're already started. The question is, how would the world change if you were an exceptional communicator? And if you find a good answer to that question one day, I think you'll be able to break through the fear. Excellent. Powerful stuff. No, it's really, really good. That analogy is really awesome because it is something everyone can get to grips with and, and it makes so much sense. It, it kind of brings to mind a, a Tony Robbins story that he once told about how he'd, he'd got a call from his, uh, from his agents to try and help. Um, I think it was Carly Simon and she was having a lot of fear going on stage and she, she kept getting panic attacks. And basically he said he couldn't help her at the time because he was on a tour and he, he, he himself didn't have the time to do it at that moment, but he could help her when he got back. So he said, but just tell me what's going on. And they explained the situation that she, she gets to go on to stage and just beforehand, she gets really nervous and she gets sweaty and her heart starts pumping and everything starts going. And that's when she knows that she's going to have a panic attack. And he said, it's really interesting because it completely reminded him of an exact uh, same situation he had with Bruce Springsteen when he interviewed Bruce Springsteen. The difference was... Bruce Springsteen described the exact same feelings and thoughts, but that's when he knew he was ready to go on stage. And it was literally the difference of mindset. For Carly, it was a kind of, I can't do this situation. For Bruce, it was like, I'm ready. My hands are sweaty, my heart's pumping, because now I'm ready to deliver my message. And I think that's what you said is really, really key there. It's, it's about, do you have that belief in the message? Do you understand what it is you're going to convey and how that's going to change yours and potentially other people's lives as well? So that makes a massive, massive difference. If you have that kind of ability to say, what I'm going to say is powerful information. So awesome. That's really, really cool. So if I was looking to look at communication myself, if I wanted to get better, if I wanted to master this, what would I do? So would I start looking, following uh, Master Talk on, on YouTube? How would I sort of go about that? Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I think the way I always like saying it is communication is a lifelong journey, right? You take one step at a time. And I hope, I hope from this conversation that helped you take that first step. I would say the next one is really just checking out the YouTube videos or joining a Toastmasters club, trying to build that community around you so you can learn from the best in the game and, and slowly make yourself better. And as long as you keep celebrating those small wins as you probably do in fitness, I, I think you'll do just fine in communication. And for people who don't know, because um, some people will, some people won't, uh, what is the Toastmasters? Yeah, of course. The Toastmasters is a nonprofit organization. They have clubs around the world where they host weekly club meetings and give speeches to support each other, to get better at communication. What's great about Toastmasters is it's not expensive at all relative to a speech coach. And there's one in pretty much every city in the world. So I, I highly recommend Toastmasters. I think it's a great opportunity, even if we're not meeting in person. A yeah. lot of the clubs are free now because everyone's meeting online. So, so I highly recommend it. Sure. Excellent. And that's, that's really cool. And, and, you know, really good of you to sort of put that out there as well, because that's going to help a lot of people, I'm sure. If someone is a little bit further along or they've got a specific speech and communication 
thing that they need coaching with, what would they do? Would they be able to reach out to someone like yourself through the, the, the YouTube channel, for example? Or Yeah, absolutely. I would say if, if you have more th- than that to invest, because I know times are difficult now, but if you do have the budget for those types of things, then the speech really matters. That's why a lot of my clients these days are generally high-level executives or you know podcasters or people who, who want to do big things in life. And have the budget for it, then yeah, absolutely. I'd love, I'd love for you to contact me, and that's that's through the YouTube channel. You can send me an email. You could message me on Instagram. But I, but I think the big message for today is, you know, I hope the YouTube channel adds a lot of value to you. I, I share all my best tips on there for free, so I hope it helps you along. Excellent. No, it really does. I mean, I've I've been spending a bit of time on there, having a look through, and there's some really useful information, and more importantly, actionable tips and information. I think that's the key that you can kind of really get in there, have a look at the channel see what's going on and then actually action some of that stuff rather than, you know, just information that you don't know what to do with. So that's really, really useful. And I'm sure a lot of people will get a lot of value out of that. So thank you very, very much for that. So what about, what about yourself now? What's the, what's the future hold for 2021 for Brendan? I, I think for me, it's, it's, you know, always practicing gratitude, see how I can increase my coaching revenue, seeing how I can look at other revenue streams of the business and definitely be a lot less reliant than I used to be on in-person events. You know, that was a big chunk that got taken away. So, so I think the idea is much like 2020, how do we reinvest the time? How do we reinvent ourselves? Because what people don't get is that you, you can't get the year back. You know, a lot of people say 2020 is canceled, but I always say, oh, is 2020 canceled? As if you can go to a bank and get a loan back for it? Didn't think uh, that was an option last time I checked. So, so I would encourage people to, to strategize with a group of people that you trust and figure out how to make 2021 your best year ever. And that's what I hope to do myself. Let's see what happens. Excellent stuff. Well, glad to hear it. And I totally agree with that. I think, uh, you know, you can go into anything with a great mindset that you're going to have a fantastic time and you're going to make that happen. Or you can go into the mindset with, you know, it's, it's out of my control. So what's the point anyway? And I think we both know which, which one you, is going to get you where you need to get to. So uh, no, I, th- I think that's, that's fantastic. Very, very good advice. Thank you very, very much for being on the show today, Brendan. Really, really useful tips, really awesome stuff. And I'm sure, as I say, there's going to be a lot of value to be had. I've had a lot of value looking at the channel personally. If you're someone who's looking to up your communication, your speech, even get that bit more confidence in having conversations online or with colleagues or whatever it is, communication is going to drive you forward in any walk of life. As Brendan said earlier on, even if it's relationships with your close friends, your family, your loved ones, or people you would like to be your close friends, family, and loved ones, then communication is the crux of all of that. So really, really key to level up as much as you can. So hope that's been really useful, guys. It has for me. Thanks again, Brendan. I'm sure we'll speak to you again soon. Uh, Remember, you can go onto the YouTube channel, Master Talk, and get all the information in there. Otherwise, guys, we will see you next time.